You know, I've said so often in so many contexts here on Emotional Savvy that you cannot give a gift you don't have. It's just not possible. You might want to give the gift, but if you don't have it, you can't give it. And the same is true with your health, with clarity, with uh, living a, a life that is very thought through and you have taken care to remove excess stressors and you're really self-aware. You know what's up. So today's guest, Brianna Wilkerson, and I are going to be talking about seven must-have areas for a healthy body and how that extrapolates to healthy emotions and the impact of those emotions on your body. So much here, a little bit different take today, so join us, listen in, and invite your friends to do the same. Talk soon. Welcome to Emotional Savvy, the Relationship Help Show. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler. If you're ready to increase your confidence in conversations and conflict, deepen your self-awareness, expand your connectedness, and enrich your relationship with yourself and other humans you care about, and even those you wish you didn't, you're in the right place. Enjoy today's episode. Welcome to Emotional Savvy. Today we're going to talk about something that is absolutely primary to you having a life that works, and that is doing the best you can to have a body that works. And we're going to look at the tie between emotional things and physical things. How do those things get entangled? How do they how do they relate to one another and what can we do to make sure both are healthy so stay tuned we're going to be talking with brianna wilkerson a holistic health coach and uh, you're going to want to hear this so stick with us welcome as i said we're going to be talking about the things that we need to think about to have a healthy body and a healthy life and how those two things intersect especially when it comes to being emotionally healthy so my guest today is brianna wilkerson welcome to the program brianna thank you so much for having me oh it's my pleasure it's always fun to talk about something a little bit different we haven't spoken about physical health for quite a while so let me tell everybody a little bit about you which is that you are a holistic health coach and you like to use essential oils mm -hmm. and you're a crossfit trainer as well and your mission is to empower women to overcome yo-yo dieting honor their bodies and the last big thing is to get a healthy body that they love and are proud of. So you work primarily with women, I take it? Yeah. Okay. So men, if you're listening, don't think this doesn't apply to you. You just can't <laughs> go work with Brianna. <laughs> <laughs> I have worked with men before, but yeah, it tends to be more like mainly women. Right. Okay. So we use this term and I've used it myself. I used to own a holistic health and yoga mm -hmm. retreat. So let's just start by defining what it means, a holistic health. Yeah, I think, you know, when we tend to think about health, particularly with our body, I think there's two things that most people think about is uh, diet and exercise, which are two foundational pillars. If we're not eating right, all of our body and our whole life is just going to reap the effects of that. And if we're not moving, we feel that as well. But I think over the years in my own journey and then working with clients, I've seen that there are other areas we need to pay attention to. Uh, pay attention to, especially things such as stress, which, you know, is a huge emotion many, many women deal with, but everyone deals with sleep, uh, their digestion, yeah. and toxic exposure that we just have in our everyday life. And of course, your mind, and how you view your health and view your life. So I think that's what I'm trying to go for when I when I say holistic, like, let's look at the whole picture, and all these different things that could be affecting your body. Right. Well, that would certainly be the way that I think of it, too, mm -hmm. is that we're looking at every aspect of our life because it all impacts our physical health. So when we're looking at the intersection between mm -hmm. my work and your work, I want to really hone in on the emotional health. Mm 
Mm -hmm. because sometimes we think they're separate. You know, I can just go off and I can eat well and I can exercise and move, maybe have a walking program. I can do something like that and that definitely will help. But if I am not feeling good about who I am, if I am in a toxic relationship, maybe I'm stuck in some way emotionally, maybe I keep attracting people that maybe I'm dating and I keep attracting people that were like, oh no, not another one, (laughs) Mm -hmm. right? We need to look at all of those factors. So you talk about seven kind of must haves um, that allow us to be holistically healthy. So let's start with looking, just give us that list of seven, tell us Mm -hmm. a little bit about them and then we can have a good place to jump off from. Yes, certainly. So I think the first one is nutrition and nourishing your body through what you consume. Our body needs fuel, it needs vitamins, it needs minerals just to function well in the way it was designed. And then looking at movement or, you know, exercise is what most people call it. But I think when we focus on the idea of let's just move more in our everyday lives, it takes away that you know, that mindset of, I just got to exercise or, you know, I got to try to fit that in. And a lot of people have a lot of emotions that they feel around exercise as well. So I just say move more. The third one is definitely stress management. Uh, And you know this probably a little bit more than I do. Just we're probably more mentally stressed now than we've ever been in our whole entire lives. We're also always so connected. And the the way that stress, stress impacts our mind and our bodies is kind of similar. So It's just a challenge for us to really learn to manage our stress well, because it does affect your body, your cortisol levels, your, all those different things. And then sleep. I think sometimes it's almost like a golden prize when we say, man, I only had five hours of sleep last night and I was still able to get everything done, but that's harming us more than we, we recognize. And so I've even worked with a lot of women who maybe when they started sleeping more, they started losing more weight or they started feeling better in their body because their body is physiologically able to work better. And all these hormones um, such as leptin and ghrelin just work a lot better. And so then digestion, most of our immune systems in our gut. And so if our gut isn't healthy with healthy uh, bacteria, with all the foods we're eating, if it's not even processing the good foods you're eating, uh, then you're going to feel that um, show up in the way that your body is able to fight and resist uh, diseases and uh, different things. And then toxic uh, tox- toxins. You know, we're just exposed to a lot of them in our personal environment. And that's kind of what I, I focus on. Obviously, you can't control what in the industrialized, you know, manufacturers do, but you can control what you clean with. And especially as women, what we put on our bodies, I think a woman could put up to a 500 chemicals on her body a day if she's not careful. Right. And that messes with your endocrine system and your hormone system and your energy levels and even your mood and emotions to an extent. So really just empowering women to know, uh, what's in their, what, what's in what the products they're using. And then the last one is really probably the most important is your mindset and your habits towards your body, towards your health, but in your life. You know, you, you probably know, you could you talk a lot about this a lot, but just the idea of like the different mindsets we tend to have is, you know, the fix, the growth. And I think a lot of women, particular when it comes to their health, tend to have more of a fixed mindset. Like, oh, things have always been this way. Mm-hmm. I try eating well for a while, it didn't work, so why try again? Or it's the new year, maybe there's a possibility. So just really like, listening to what we believe and what we say could really shift, um, you know, us reaching our goals in regards to our bodies and our health. Okay. So that gives us lots of places (laughs) to go here. So let's just take them in order. First of all, nutrition. Mm -hmm. I mean, certainly we have depleted food sources. Yes. And so if you go just any old where and buy any old thing, you may not be getting the highest quality, most nutrition packed, nutrition dense foods. So what's a good rule of thumb for food acquisition? Yeah, I think that's a really great point because sometimes even when we're eating the highest organic locally grown food, it really depends on when it was picked, you know, how it was transported, what soil it was in. And so I honestly tell women where the place to start is just try to eat as many whole foods as possible from most, you know, organic or local. And with that though, just even if you do that perfectly, you're right. There may still be some nutrition you're lacking. So 
really consider a good supplement of some kind or doing research as opposed to like what uh, certain micronutrients the foods you're eating have if you're deficient in those. Okay, let me ask a question about that mm -hmm. because I used to take way more supplements than I yeah. do now. And when I worked with my naturopath and I looked at all my very, very in-depth blood results, mm -hmm. I didn't need them. Mm. You know, because my diet was providing everything. Right. It was all in the good range. Right. So that's one of the things, isn't it? That people can go, they can have access to their yes. health care. They can have a good panel done. Okay. Find out if you have any deficiencies and mm -hmm. only address those and then do Correct. the rest by food. <laughs> yes, yes. Because there is, there is such a thing as taking in too much of a certain nutrients yeah. too and your body just gets rid of it because sometimes we see the vitamins like oh 400 vitamin c but your body is like that's maybe that may be too much right. and so you're right getting a good panel done for sure is definitely probably yeah good. i think that's a good caution for everybody listening today is so, you know, stay in good contact with mm -hmm. your doctor and the blood test yeah. because it will tell you that okay this is not working so well here you you've got a deficit and a little tweak can mm -hmm. make all the difference but if you're putting out because people love to sell you supplements <laughs> very very true and so people say oh well if you took this and this and this like i have so many people who come to me and they say well you know i'm trying to keep my health up while i'm going through this toxic relationship and mm -hmm. i have uh, of course people who are going through toxic relationships are much more receptive as susceptible to autoimmune diseases, things like fibromyalgia, lupus, mm -hmm. um, things like that. And so they say, well, I'm going to take a big bunch of vitamins. Well, that's not the best place to spend right. your money. The mm -hmm. best place is to start with a good blood panel, mm -hmm. explain to your physician what you need it for, mm -hmm. and then, then supplement if required. Would you agree? Yeah, I agree. I agree. I definitely think, you know, rather than just, you know, doing this overabundance of thing, like everything's wrong, let me just take everything in. It is going to your physician and saying, hey, where, what do I actually need to focus on versus what do I think I do or some other people may be telling me to do. Right. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't mean to sound like it's not a good idea that people mm -hmm. sell supplements. Oh, totally. But, yeah. you know, if you only have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So mm -hmm. someone gets really hot on some MLM system and mm -hmm. they think you should have everything. Mm -hmm. And and that's not accurate. It's simply about your body, what your body needs and only what your body needs, not Correct. what research is showing that everybody is deficient in. No, right. you, how are you deficient? So that's a really good starting place. And then I like what you said about movement because... Mm -hmm. I think it's much easier for everybody to think of, I need to move more rather than, oh, I've got to exercise. I know. <laughs> it feels different even when you say the two words, you know? Yeah, it does. Like for me, I have a routine of getting on my shoes and going for a walk twice mm -hmm. a day. You know, whenever I just feel and that I'm like to finish what I'm doing right now and maybe I need to be fresher, then I'll go for a walk. And just knowing that I have gone for a walk twice a day for 20 minutes makes all the difference to my right. health, right? And mm -hmm. even though, yes, I have a gym membership and I started doing yoga when I was 19 and I still do it to a degree, um, but moving mm -hmm. is the first step. Yes, Right now, what do you think about this Fitbit business and the 10,000 oh. steps? <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I think the Fitbits and the steps and I do, a, you know, CrossFit, which is cross training and I, which very, it depends on intensity and the different movements. I, I remember trying to track my steps and I would always fall short because maybe I'm not doing a lot of steps, but I am moving quite right. a bit. And so I think it depends on the person. So for me, as an achiever, it was kind of like, man, I'm not reaching my steps. And you would find me walking around at nine o'clock at night trying to get <laughs> these steps. And I'm like, no, this is that, that, that wasn't healthy. So I think for me, just knowing that I took an hour out of my day to move and I was, you know, feeling like the workout was challenging, that was good enough for me. So I think there is room for Fitbits and, you know, step trackers. If that's the place where you you know, you thrive on that and it helps you keep going. But if you feel like you're going to beat yourself up constantly because you didn't hit your step count, I would say just don't do it. 
you know. Probably not working well for you because that's taking an emotional toll. Again, I'm not good enough. I I didn't do enough. Exactly. You know, I was I was out at the beach and, and spending a day with a friend last Sunday, and she kept taking out her phone and saying, "Oh, we've only gone six thousand steps. Feels like right. more." And I was like, "Relax. Yeah, we're walking. Right, right. Like yeah. we're walking, we're moving, and we have to get back. So we're going to double those six thousand steps. So chill, That's true. right? That's true. <laughs> but it became fanatical. Like how many steps? How many steps? Mm-hmm. And then we have this new research that says ten thousand is really not the goal. Seven thousand mm-hmm. is is good, and so things change. Right. So I, I like what you're saying there about that because. Let's just embrace more movement Mm -hmm. and then do it in any way you like. Right. Right? Yes. Go for a walk with a friend. Um, Go dancing. Mm -hmm. You know, I was watching a Facebook thing. I don't know. It was late at night and and one of those videos came up and it was an older woman, quite a bit older, like 90. And she wanted to release weight and stay healthy and she couldn't go outdoors. And she had a very small apartment. But she had worn a path in her carpet because she walked for 20 minutes at a time, a couple of times a day, you know, really Mm -hmm. energetic walking, but right in her apartment and she regained her health. Yeah. And so it's not about needing a gym membership, particular Mm -hmm. shoes. It's about remembering to move. Yeah. And I think one thing that helps would even help people put this into perspective, like, you know, many of us are sitting most of our day. And even if you put an alarm every hour or every other hour and just say, move for five to 10 minutes, stretch, go to the water cooler, you'd be amazed how much actual more movement you have in your day. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can go down a flight of stairs and come back up. Right. Many times when I'm working with my clients, I am helping them learn to breathe better Mm -hmm. because in order to reoxygenate your whole body, um, you need to do some deep breathing exercises so that you can get out the cobwebs. Mm -hmm. So we want to have more oxygen in our body. So in order to do that, we need to release the carbon dioxide that's sitting stored because stored carbon dioxide causes us to yawn and to sigh. And that's a clear indication Mm -hmm. that we need to move. So really important. So let's go on to number three, stress Mm -hmm. management, because that's big. And everybody just went, oh, yeah, you know, what am I supposed to do about that? And we have busy lives and we have certain stressors. Um, Just by getting up in the morning and hearing noise, we have Mm -hmm. stressors. So how do people begin to do an audit on their need Mm -hmm. for stress management? Yeah, I learned this uh, trick from a program I did a while back called the Eliminate, Reduce, and Cope Method. And just, it's simply taking a piece of paper and writing out your stressors. I mean, everything that's currently stressing you. And then being very honest, you're asking yourself, which one of these can I eliminate? And mm-hmm. more often than not, it, for me, it's, a, it's something that if I only did that action, I would eliminate it. Like maybe I'm dreading calling someone because it's going to be a tough conversation, but I will not eliminate that stressor unless I do it, right? Uh, and then which ones can we reduce? Like reduce the intensity of the stress or, or maybe there's things in our lives we just need to cope with and then how do we go and cope? But I, I think the big thing with that exercise is just realizing that, you know, it's more of an awareness thing. Like what's actually going on and where do I have control? Because I think when it comes to stress, we often feel like it's out, like outside of us. Like it, it's just happening to us versus how we're choosing to respond. Mm -hmm. And I think another piece of that important puzzle is looking at the place of support. Yes. Like this idea that we have to do it all alone, like a person who really has it together can cope. I put something on Facebook the other day, and I I, I can't quote it verbatim, but it was like a person, a, a person who's carrying a lot, you know, you may not be able to see the weight. Mm. You know, you you may look at them and not see the weight that they're carrying because they've learned to cope so well in their public image. And then you've got all below the surface. Or if you look at that metaphor of you, you watch a duck and it looks like it's gliding, but underneath it's paddling as fast as it can. And 
those things are important when we think about our stress like mm -hmm. <clears throat> that that difference between the face i'm putting on the world and what i'm really feeling and all that can be a stressor right in its own and yes. that's when we know we need support isn't it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i think that's one thing i find that women feel more than anything these days is just like they have to have it all together, especially in a social media world where it looks like everyone, what you're saying, everyone is just great and they're never stressed and they have perfect pictures and perfect family. And I really think we just need to see that one, that's not true. Uh, but two, we're not made to do this life alone. And so the more that we try to do it alone is more stress will probably be actually. Uh, we're meant to have support and meant to uh, ask for support. Mm -hmm. And some people don't feel that they can ask for support or right. accept support or even get professional help yeah. because they're supposed to know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And they think that it's just a weakness. And I'm always telling people, Brianna, that going to get help, going to a coach like Brianna, coming to a consultant like me to help you with your relationship with yourself and others, that's what strong people do. They right. say, I matter, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I matter enough to say, I need expert help. I can't know everything about every area of life. Mm -hmm. I may be off being an attorney or a mother of four children on a budget or whatever's causing my stress. Right. And I can't know everything that I need to know. So you go to an expert and say, hey, you know, please focus on me and help me understand what I need mm -hmm. and then support me to get it. And then you can go on in a much healthier fashion. One of the statistics that I was just, oh, gobsmacked when I heard it was some statistics from the Gottman Institute that says a couple, their research and they're very research based, said a couple will have an issue for up to six years before they'll get help for it. Wow. Now, if we just extrapolate that idea for a moment, you know, maybe you have a little ache or pain, or maybe you mm -hmm. gained five pounds or right. something. Are you going to wait six years until it's become a much bigger issue, or would you start it now? Right. Yeah. I think you're so right. We kind of wait till it's just like we can't deal with it anymore and then we seek help versus I just love what you're saying because even as a health coach it's I just kind of went through this this mini program with another health coach just because I needed a little reboot I needed a different perspective and mm -hmm. it, it's you know we I just love what you're saying you know we everyone's seeking help because we all can't do it alone and even if even when you know a lot of it sometimes you just need a different perspective and someone else to hold you accountable as you yeah, absolutely through. true. And in that accountability, people mm -hmm. who do it well are supportive. They are loving, right. but they have boundaries and they expect you to honor them. Right. And they expect you to create boundaries and plans for yourself. And then they support you to honor them. You know, you go to the doctor because the doctor says to you, hey, you know, your lungs wouldn't feel like this if you weren't smoking. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're afraid to go to the doctor because they're going to tell you that you have to stop smoking if you're a smoker and you don't want to hear that. And we hear that so much, particularly in the reluctance that men seem to have to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And what a missed opportunity, because when something is small and you do something small to correct it, even though stopping smoking is not small, but you take that one step, well, then you don't have lung disease, you don't have um, difficulties in the other organs, you don't have diminished capacity, you haven't ruined two relationships because you've been on edge. I mean, a million things could come from taking that one small step in favor of yourself. I know that smoking is not good for me, I can see what it's doing, my partner hates it when I smoke, I have to go outside, that's time not with my partner, is that okay with me? Mm -hmm. You know, looking more in depth. So how do you help someone look at that, Brianna? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, sorry, say that you mean like taking one step at a time, mm -hmm. that kind of, yeah, I love working with people who just want to do one step at a time, actually, because I think that's what I, what I preach, what I teach, 
is that many of the women coming to me, you know, have tried these, these programs or these intense diets that felt like 30 steps at a time. And it required such a change in their thinking and their life. They, they weren't able to do other things that they just were had to do like work and think about their kids and all these extracurriculars. Uh, but the problem with taking one step at a time is it takes longer and we need to be very, very patient. And so I just actually have someone who started working with me, I think in one of my, my free, my free healthy body challenge, uh, last June, who eventually started doing my, uh, my programs and it's been about a year and a half. And she just said the other day, like someone came up to her and said, Hey, it looks like you're, you're, you're losing a little weight. You look healthier. And she just was celebrating mm -hmm. and she took one step at a time reducing her sugar intake, switching out all that rice for some more vegetables, moving more. And she's just a living testimony to that. And even in my own story. So I will say it's hard if you're used to just wanting to get all the results right now, but taking one step at a time in all of these areas we're talking about will lead to long-term change. But you know, we're talking about something as such a gift to give yourself which is to get away from the do more, be more, have more, and get yes. it immediately. Exactly. <laughs> so once you do that, maybe for your health, mm -hmm. you can get better at doing it in every area of your life. Yes. And like you were saying, three things to change. Okay, replace the rice, rice with vegetables. Okay, that's something very concrete. Mm -hmm. I could do that, right? Um, move for 15 minutes a day purposefully. Mm -hmm. Do that, right? Doable steps. Right. You know, yeah. um, I have a, I've written lots of books and one of them yeah. I talk about TTDCs, how mm -hmm. very important it is to know your TTDCs. And it applies so much to what we're talking about. That book is called Pack Your Own Parachute. And mm. it TTDCs stand for breaking things into teeny tiny doable chunks <laughs> mm. it's right. so funny that you're saying this because right before this you know i mean i like, was thinking about how you wrote so many books and I'm, i was working on my book and it is so funny because i literally thought what you just said i'm like brana why are you stressing out that you're taking these tiny chunks to write your book because you're doing all these things but you did the exact same thing with your health you took tiny steps so what what what, what is calling causing this disparity Mm -hmm. And right before this, I'm like, you know what? I really need to celebrate those tiny chunks I'm doing. Uh, because as you're saying, it is easier to apply it into your lives, but sometimes you forget. Forget that you are successful in another area because of those tiny chunks. Right, you know? and we're just experts at beating ourselves up. Oh, so good at it. <laughs> <laughs> so good at okay. it. And let me just remind everybody, you want to know more about Brianna, go to madewell345.com. And the 345 doesn't mean anything. It's just her website, madewell345.com. So don't get fancy. Just remember yeah. 345, madewell345.com. So I hope you're feeling encouraged as we're talking about teeny tiny doable chunks mm -hmm. you can change something you know you're you're lusting after a beverage and you say sugar no sugar okay i think i can do no sugar there mm -hmm. you are one small change so yeah. i want to get to the other thing so let's talk about sleep yeah it's such a such a thing i mean there are stages in life when mm -hmm. you have maybe young children and you're working or you're running as fast as you can right how do you focus on sleep as a beginning if you're not doing it well yeah i think the first thing is to to you know uh forgive yourself i think it's very easy uh, to say, man, I haven't been getting enough sleep, so I'm going to try. And then you do it for a couple days, and then it doesn't work again. And uh, I just think sleep, it's way more uh, parts to it than we think. And so to give yourself grace as you figure out what is your best uh, sleeping environment, what time is best for you to go to sleep, because everybody's body is different. Someone may thrive, honestly, someone may thrive on six or seven hours, and they feel great and alert, and some people may need nine. And so let's stop comparing and saying, oh, wow, you need that. I need this. But I, I would say just, okay, give yourself some permission to just explore what is the best sleep routine and sleep time and all that for you. And then go ahead and try a couple steps. And so some of those things are definitely, you know, knowing that when we are exposed to light, our body is alert. 
And so especially now with our phones and TV and computer, even us, it's like we just have to be careful from at night when it starts to get dark that we're just not exposing ourselves to a lot of those those blue lights. So whether it's dimming your thing or getting the, the glasses, uh, but then also your sleep environment, uh, whether it's if it's dark or not, uh, whether if it's cold or hot, that makes a difference. Uh, you know, even the hour or two before bed is important. Thinking about, am I trying to work and then just go to sleep right away? <laughs> Your brain is so stimulated. So what can you do to relax? Is it coloring? Is it reading? Is it talking, journaling? And so I, those are so, there's so many things you can do to create a better sleep routine. But I think the first thing is one, give grace to yourself and honestly, give yourself permission. Like just, you can't do everything in a day. You need to sleep. Just Give yourself permission to sleep. <laughs> yes, your day has to end. <laughs> right, it has to end at some point. <laughs> yeah. I know one of the things for me that's important, and this might help someone, is that I need to get up at the same time every day regardless mm -hmm. of anything. Right. You know, so if I didn't get enough sleep or I didn't go to bed or I didn't get home or whatever it is, doesn't matter, I get up at the same time. Yeah. And that helps my body a great deal. Mm-hmm just knowing that okay you're going to get up at that time and it then it regulates itself much better right. than saying oh i need x number of hours of sleep so i didn't fall asleep till two so now i have to sleep till nine yeah no you the bodies don't work well that way right so sleep is like as you said such a huge 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 thing right. and um, we could go into it forever but we're trying to give people all seven of these things so let's yes. talk about digestion i isn't that one of the first questions a medical professional asks you? Mm -hmm. How's your digestion? Right. And uh, the more holistic the practitioner, the more early you'll hear that question. <laughs> yes, very, very quickly, because I think what they recognize is that most of these, these chronic or these autoimmune conditions many people are facing, it stems in the gut. And, and that, you know, the digestive process starts from the minute that actually you smell food, you start chewing to the minute it leaves your body. And there's so many different parts that could go wrong with that or, you know, not go as well. And so I just really ask people, okay, you know, what is your digestive system like? Is there, do you tend to get gas when, when something happens? Do you tend to, or the opposite, constipation or diarrhea? Or, you know, just how regular are you? Because those are key indications to how your body's taking in and processing foods. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that I really just encourage women to do, well, I have to work on this because naturally my, my family, we're just very fast eaters, is to actually take a moment to breathe before you eat and eat slowly and chew your food. That will up your body's ability to digest and actually extract the nutrients you're eating like 10 times fold. But we're, we're, we're also busy like, okay, I'm going to eat on the go or which – which makes your stomach upset. You may not feel like it, but it's just harder to digest because your body's in this sympathetic response. Like, oh, fight or flight, I'm just moving all the time versus this rest and digest response. Let's just rest, digest, literally, and digest your food. So, Good points, for sure, because we do live in a world that says, you know, grab something. Right. I mean, if, are you going to grab something to eat? I mean, doesn't that already in it say you don't have time, right. you're not going to sit down, you're going to just get on to what's more important than nourishing your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so if we have that mentality, which is number seven on your list, but mm -hmm. if we have that mentality that says, I actually deserve to sit down, have a mindful meal. Mm hmm it doesn't matter, you know, if that is a very simple meal, a small meal, whatever it is, but that mindfulness that this is my time for eating and I'm going to be aware of it. I'm not going to sit at my computer and mindlessly do this while I'm talking to somebody. Yes. Right? Very important. So I do want to get to all these pieces. I'd yeah. love to talk to you about microbiomes and all mm -hmm, that kind of I thing. Know. <laughs> Big deal to me. I love yes. talking about that kind of thing. But let's move on to toxins in our environment. Mm -hmm. um, I love what you said. A woman could have on 500 different toxins in a day. Yeah. Yeah, I think... You know, the beauty industry has, there's a lot of great books on this, but the beauty industry has done a really good job at playing to the idea that, you know, we just want to smell nice, we want to look nice. And I think that's, there's totally room for that. I want to smell nice and look nice. 
but often they're adding these kind of these synthetic chemicals that they don't actually have to tell you what's in the products and because of their trade secrets and they don't actually have to test it in a certain way now some countries have more regulations on this than others but you know there's just uh, there's a dirty dozen of like chemical uh cosmetic chemicals actually but and even a dirty dozen for food and what i've just seen as i've learned more i've actually gotten like super upset over this is because we just are so unaware of the things that we're putting on our bodies not just in but on our bodies and what they're actually doing mm -hmm. so i see a lot of women complaining about energy issues thyroid issues even weight management issues like they're eating while they're exercising but one of these missing links is just that these toxins that they're exposed to is disrupting their hormone system and their hormone system as you know is these chemical messengers in their bodies just saying hey work go do this go do this but it the, these um, estrogen mimicking chemicals start to say like oh no i'm not you don't don't do that i'm here it's fine but really it's not there so i just think what the when, when i've uh, personally worked on this and worked with women they've just started to have more energy they just started to feel a lot different when they switched one cleaning product or one shampoo or one perfume to a more natural thing. And that's why I really try to start with people. Again, this is a one step thing because if you go into your kitchen, go into your bathroom and try to change everything, you're going to, you're going to really break your budget because <laughs> yeah. it's going to be changing so much. Right? So just take one step. And I did this over the last four years. It took me a while to slowly shift everything. Um, in the toxin area. Oh, I understand so completely because I have a housekeeper. She uses no products that have scent. She uses no, you know, I'm really, really fussy about that and she's really, really good about it. It's all natural stuff. I don't use anything in the scent department of any kind except right. occasionally a little roll on of an essential oil. Right. And even that is done for my health, not mm -hmm. the way I want to smell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. So again, we're at the teeny tiny doable chunks, chunks. business yeah. because, you know, swap something out when you're out of something swap something out, mm -hmm. make sure that it's going to work better for you. Mm -hmm. And, and that becomes doable. And most things that cost more, most products that cost more last way longer. They so do. don't get caught in that. Well, right. I can go to the dollar store and buy Fabuloso. Oh, um, and, and then I wonder why I walk into my house and I think it smells good, but I forget that it's not just the scent, it's everything right. that I'm smelling at the same time. Yeah. so important and then what you put on your skin remember that your skin is the biggest organ you have on your body is taking mm -hmm. everything in so mm -hmm. very important and so I want to move to number seven and I'm yeah. going to put this caveat in here I am talking to Brianna Wilkerson she mm -hmm. is a holistic health coach and she's got lots of great ideas for you I talked with Brianna earlier and I know that she's quite willing, and you've probably heard in this interview, she's quite willing to go slowly and mm -hmm. help you make those incremental changes. So we're going to talk about number seven, which is mindset and all, but we're probably going to run out of time. So I just <laughs> want to put that in there because it is such a huge topic to talk oh, about. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And this affects your emotional life, which then affects your physical life and how you view life and how you view mm -hmm. yourself all of these pieces. So can you kind of just give us the overview of number seven? Yeah, I think you, you know, too, uh, the mind and everything that it really does stem in your mind and what you believe about something informs your thoughts and your words and your emo emotions and then your actions and habits. And so often we're trying to change our reality or trying to change our habits, but we're never addressing what we truly to believe about something. So we think if I eat this weight or lose this weight or you know, able to run a 5k, I'm going to feel great about my body versus like, what is it like to actually do the deeper work of feeling great about your body before you do those things or as you do those things? I just, I just really encourage women to sum up that kind of area is just to take a step and be more aware about what they think and feel towards health and their body, because that's just going to give them a lot of information and a place to start when it comes to that. Yes. 
So you can see, I mean, that is huge. That's a huge area. <laughs> it's just too big to even attack yeah, at yeah, this yeah. moment. But you are writing a new book and yeah. it's called Healthy Body Secret. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so it's going to kind of have all the things we talk about here. My story in journeying these areas, some of my client's stories, but then kind of the education around this stuff. I think when it comes to our health, we just tend, to, our body in particular, we tend to follow what the mainstream me is telling us we should do, but I really just want to encourage people to go deeper and to learn kind of these secrets I've learned along the way. And so, yeah, the book probably won't be out to early next year because I just want to take my time with it and make it, you know, do it really well. But yeah, I just feel like it's time to get some of these things that I've learned out into the world in a bigger way. Yeah, I think it's a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. And I hope people will follow you. Remember yeah. to go to Brianna at madewell345.com madewell345.com. Thank you so much for being my guest today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure of mine. We've touched on so many things, <laughs> seven big areas, definitely worth looking at. I hope you will. I hope you'll visit Brianna's website, madewell345.com, and go and get her seven-day challenge. It's free, mm -hmm. and it's in the uh, show notes, so you can hit that link and get it immediately. Be part of that and start that Little Steps Every Day program. So mm -hmm. thanks so much for being with us, and I look forward to having you with me in the next episode. Go back and listen to other episodes episodes. Also listen to my other podcast, Save Your Sanity, Help for Toxic Relationships. That's the area of my greatest expertise and where I focus, helping people understand, recognize toxic relationships, abusive relationships, whether that's physical, mental, sexual, psychological, financial, and emotional abuse. You need to know all about that and you need help to see the effects in your life and then to heal. And I'll empower you to do that over there. So wherever you like to get your podcast, also get Emotional Savvy, which you're listening to today. But then find Save Your Sanity, and that will help you too. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler. You find me at transformingrelationship.com. Talk soon. <music>Thanks for being here for today's episode of Emotional Savvy. If you want to deepen your emotional savvy, make shifts in your relationships, and enjoy life and relationships more, work with me, Dr. Roberta Shaler. Get my books, enjoy my courses, or work with me directly. You can do that by visiting forrelationshiphelp.com, F-O-R, relationship, H-E-L-P.com, and subscribe to Tips for Relationships Now. Don't miss a thing. Be empowered this week with more emotional savvy.